It's over. It's finally over. I finally finished Catcher in the Rye. After about half a year of trying this and wanting to do this for like 10 years, I finally finished this book. And it's it's terrible. It, it's absolutely terrible. I, I, I absolutely hate it. The first 20% or so when he's just dicking around at, uh, what is it, Pensy Prep, it's like, it's just kind of boring. Then the rest, uh, 79% of it is just absolutely, absolutely terrible. I just, I just hated holding Caulfield throughout this entire thing. Absolutely hated him. He was just an absolutely, absolutely, absolutely miserable person. But I just wish would have killed himself halfway through the book when he said I would have after the prostitute. But then, you know, he did die. He metaphorically died. This entire book, it's all its all death. This thing is a tragedy. It's not a coming-of-age story. You've been hoodwinked. You're wrong. It's not a coming-of-age story. It's a tragedy. Holden Caulfield's a horrible person. The character is a villain whose death is a happy one. When Phoebe rejected him in the last 10 pages or whatever, the last chapter of the book, when Phoebe's like, yeah, I'm going to come with you. And he's like, no. And then Phoebe rejects him. And he's like feeling all bad about it. I was so happy. I was so happy. He was finally getting what was coming to him because he hurt Phoebe because that's all he knows how to do is how to hurt people. All he knows how to do is alienate people. And then when Phoebe like finally rejected him, the last person on earth that actually cared about him or that he actually cared about rejected him. And why nothing to do with him? That was just so satisfying to see it where it's like basically everything up and after Antolini was him slowly dying. I mean, sure, it's all he's physically alive at this rest home, but you know, the rest home, it's a metaphor for purgatory or hell. That's what it is. It's a metaphor for that. I mean, rest homes, asylums, they don't have a very good reputation. They have a reputation of basically being hell on earth. That's where he's at right now. He's at hell on earth. And the entire thing, it's him just telling his story and how he got to this place, how he got to hell, how he died. That's what tragedies are. Tragedies are stories of how the character dies. And that's what this is. It's him. It's not him telling how he grew as a person because, well, it's kind of hard to do that in this first person perspective where he's giving commentary on everything and the entire time he's just further explaining that no he has not grown as a person at all and it's just like the ending when the carousel and stuff it's not him like growing up and having a realization no he is dying he's stumbling after Antolini after I'm sure Antolini drugged him and gave him the realization that his life sucks He's stumbling. He's feeling terrible. He feels like he's dying because metaphorically he is. And then when Phoebe rejects him, it kills him. And as he's like walking with her to the zoo, it's him on his trap path to the afterlife. And when Phoebe like is riding the carousel and he feels happy and it starts to rain on him, it's him dying, it's him crossing over to the other side. This book, death is a very common theme in this book. And I don't know about you, but all the coming-of-age stories that I've read typically don't feature death nearly as prominently. You might have a character that's a little afraid of death, and then in the climax they come to the uh, problem of death and they have to confront it. Or, you know, they might have one character die that hurts them, and then the entire process is them come getting over that. Well, Holden doesn't get over that. And it's not just him. It's like with the pimp, with the... Out with Allie, with him in the park uh, swinging and his hair freezing, and with him like wanting to run away and just be dead to his family, it's all about him dying. The entire book is an analogy of death, an allegory of death. Holden Caulfield dies at the end. It's a tragedy. It all makes sense. That's why I hated this book so much in English class, because it was taught as a coming-of-age story, and it's not. All the lessons were about how we're supposed to feel sorry for Holden and what all this means. And it's not. He's talk when he talks about his tombstone and how it would just be Holden Caulfield, born whatever, died whatever, and then on the bottom, F you. That's what this entire book is. It's always him just giving the middle finger to the entire world. 
That's what it is. And that's what he's saying to the world. That's what the entire book is. It's just him saying, F you. It's a tragedy, everyone. It's a terrible book. And I hate Holden Caulfield for it. And I hate what we had to do in English class for it. And I wish I had my life back from that. But, you know, that's what it is. It's a tragedy. We should have read something else if we wanted to get a coming-of-age story. We read plenty of other tragedies. Julius Caesar, Romeo and Juliet, The Crucible. I can't remember if The Great Gatsby was a tragedy, but it kind of sounds... But from what I remember, it kind of was. We were playing tragedies. We didn't need to re-catch from the rye. We could have read something better. This has been Pokematic, signing off, and bye bye